want to forewarn everybody that this uh, <clears throat> tutorial is going to be um, a little bit longer than normal. Uh, I usually try to make my videos like right around 10 to 12 minutes long. Uh, I would like to shorten them up, but unfortunately these software videos are, are just that. Uh, there's too much information and trying to squeeze that into a short video is a little bit difficult. So it was a 30 minute video and I was able to cut it down to um, right around 15 minutes. Uh, so I was able to cut it in half. So if you if you can, um, please stick around. Uh, this is uh, just some information uh, for the people that are, are either decapping injectors or that are purchasing decapped injectors from me. Uh, this is just another form of information where they can go and and try certain things to get their projects up and going. Appreciate everybody stopping by the channel, and hopefully you'll stick you'll stick through the video. Hey everybody, how's it going? This is uh, Dave with DNE Performance coming to you from the office. Um, today's video is just based on recently I've been selling uh, products on the internet. Um, I always leave the link on the bottom of my videos to where you can click and go straight over to eBay to get my products. Uh, of decapped injectors uh, from me. Um, this is the injector data that you can enter in and at least you know get your vehicle close. And so we want to make sure that our wiring is correct. Uh, we want to make sure that um, uh, we have uh, uh, fuel pressure, proper fuel pressure, all the basic things. Uh, make sure you don't have any uh, trouble codes or anything like that. Um, you know, when we key on and then try to start, and we've got you know misfire codes or codes that are, are related to maybe making the vehicle run poorly. All our stuff is in order, like all our wiring. Um, that's the biggest thing uh, I see is wiring. Make sure that the you know all our grounds, all our power sources, um, all our relays, all that stuff um, is is wired correctly and and is functioning the way it should uh, before you actually you know uh, try starting the vehicle off for the first time because uh, that stuff can affect the way the vehicle is going to tune. So again, we have a, a 2004 Chevy. Avalanche uh, 5.3 and um, where you can go to get this data uh, is you can go to there's quite a few sources where you can get you know start entering some data in here to try to get the vehicle fired off or get it somewhat uh, close um, you know before you take it to the tuner or if you're trying to tune it yourself um, you can you can enter this data in and then somewhat try to get try to get it close uh, so there's there's two there's there's about three different uh, tables you can use so you're just gonna have to kind of it you know it's it's either gonna be a hit and a miss uh, the two that I normally start out with is the 50 pound per hour or the 60 pound per hour so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with the 50 pound per hour uh, table I've already got this table pulled up which is right here and um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our we're gonna concentrate so when you open your tune it's gonna send you to the general and then just go to fuel general and then you're gonna have all your injector data so the injector data that we're gonna be looking at today is our flow rate versus KPA um, our minimum injector pulse width our default uh, injector pulse width uh, our offset table and then our short pulse adder and a full uh, vacuum and KPA uh, you just want to make sure that this table matches so 0 to 80 and then if we open up our uh, flow rate versus KPA um, this is gonna this is gonna be uh, 0 to 80 like I said this is a re this is a returnless style system because you can see the numbers they start from 24.5 and they go up to 27.1 so just want to mention that if you have a uh, return style <clears throat> uh, fuel system and not a return list fuel system um, so what you can do is because these flow rates are set up for a return list 
So all, what you would want to do is just take the very first number, which is 64.6, and then just enter it right into 64.6. And then enter this right into the to the table uh, from there. Uh, that's the only thing that's going to be different between the the return list and the return style. So you have a return list style, which is it, it just dead heads into the rail, and then the other one is your return style, which returns back to the tank. Second, so we want to make sure that we're on the pound per hour. Uh, and then we're just going to come over here. Uh, if your base, this is going to be your base pressure swapped into like maybe a 72 Chevelle or something like that, or, you know, a 72 Nova or something like that. And we have our base pressure set at um, 58 PSI. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll grab this table and you can see that the pressure uh, goes up um, and so does the flow rate right here. So if you at almost 70 uh, PSI, this injector is probably going to be tapped. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to grab this right here, uh, and then we'll Control C, uh, and then we're going to we're going to click in the box right here, Control V, and that's going to change our flow rate. Um, so we can get out of this, <clears throat> go to our um, short pulse adder. So we're going to look at our short our short pulse adder here. Uh, we're going to go into our short pulse adder table. We're going to open this table up. Okay, so what we're going to do um, after you uh, open up your short, your short pulse adder table is we're just going to go in here and we're going to highlight. Let's do this again. Okay. And then we're going to hit Control C. We're going to go right here. We're going to hit Control V. And then that's going to enter all the data that we need to uh, add in. As you can see right here where it says uh, 0, 0.0. Um, and then we go back in here to the beginning where it says 0 0.1. That should It should line up, and it does. Uh, it's probably going to correct it a little bit, um, HP Tuners is. So uh, we entered that data in, and then um, what we need to add in next is we need to add in this uh, our short pulse limit. So we're going to go to our short pulse limit table, which is um, 2.8750. So we just go back over to our tune. So 2.875 right here. And then uh, we're also that now the next thing after we entered our uh, our short uh, pulse adder information uh, we've already entered our um, uh, injector flow so we got those two knocked out we're gonna go over to our offset table so the way we're gonna enter our offset table we're gonna have to open this up just a little bit uh, as we're gonna look so um, right here where it says uh, manifold. Uh, vacuum KPA and then our injector uh, differential pressure PSI. Uh, so this is in volts, and so this is volts, and then this is your um, pressure. So as you can see right here, your pressure as your pressure goes up. Uh, this is the uh, KPA that it's in. So zero to eighty KPA, and then of course. Um, our volts, our minimum volts here is uh, 4.5, so 4.5 all the way up to uh, 20.5, and we have uh, quite a few different tables here. So you have one that starts off at four, one that uh, ends at 20, one that starts off at four, ends at 20. Use we're going to use this first table right here. Uh, we're going to use this first table because it's in KPA. These other two tables right here at the bottom are most likely in pressure user pressure so we, we need our ours and kpa because if you look over here offset table it should be in in uh, kpa and it is it's in kpa and we're going we're starting at uh, 4.5 and we're ending at at 18 volts so what we want to do <clears throat> is uh, let's just leave that open there
we can we can come down here and then just kind of go down to where uh, 18 volts is because that's all we need is 18 volts uh, we don't need past that and then we'll just scroll all the way over here and then um, control C we'll minimize this and we'll just click in the box here and then control V that's going to change all our um, our offsets uh, so we got this knocked out of the park. Um, so all we need now is our limits. So we're going to go over here again. And like I said, you can see right here where it says, you know, minimum uh, injector pulse width, uh, our short pulse adder, and our flow. So we need our minimum injector pulse width. Uh, this one's going to be pretty simple too. So um, we're going to open our minimum injector pulse width table. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to copy... Um, from zero, so we want to make sure from zero to 8,000 RPM, zero to 8,000 RPM, and we're just going to copy this whole table. Control C here, Control V. It did. So then we're going to go to our um, differential injector pulse, and what we're going to do here, um, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. We're going to go down here. We're going to highlight this table. We're going to go control C, minimize this, we'll click on this box, and then uh, control V. That's going to change uh, our differential, or I'm sorry, our default, not our differential, our default. So our flow rate um, multiplier versus volts, uh, we will end up, le we'll leave this alone. Um, we're not, we're not going to mess with this table. This is just a multiplier table, and we're going to leave this alone. Um, I'm not going to touch that. So at this point, the uh, injector, um, the in the injector uh, data is entered. Usually, never this table. It's always these three tables right here that that I'm going to use. You know, poor idling issues. The other the other thing to do, and this usually straightens out a, a lot of issues with uh, if you have like a big giant cam in there. And it just it it fires up and it wants to idle and then it dies off. Is um, going over to the idle tab, and then going to your base set points. So you go to your base set points, and what we're looking to do in this table is highlight this whole table and then just uh, either try 100 RPM increments. So we're just going to add 100 RPM to the whole table. Uh, flash the car. Try to start it, and if it does, if it starts and dies and does the same thing again, come back in here and then add another uh, uh, hundred RPMs until you can get the car to fire off. Fires off, it's going to want to idle the car high because it's trying to it's trying to warm the the engine up. So it, it's going to taper off, as you can see here. Um, we're in um, coolant temp. Uh, versus RPM here. So as the coolant temperature goes up, your the the RPM is gonna is gonna dwindle off. It's gonna it's gonna start to decel in in your RPM range. So you just gotta remember um, that you're gonna get a high idle at first because it's trying to warm the engine up. Uh, that that goes for any standalone system. It doesn't matter if it's a Holly or a Motec or whatever. Uh, you can go on there and set the these tables just like that as the factory sets them up. <clears throat> Most of the time, this is what I usually do with these tables. Uh, I'll, I'll start off high in the in the lower temps and then uh, taper down. And then when we get to start getting into the 240 range, um, I'll usually highlight this whole table right here and then just bring the RPM down so the car, you know, if the car starts overheating, especially at idle, like if you're in the driveway and you're just starting it up and then the car, you walk away, or you're doing something and then the car just wants to die out and then you can go back and verify what's you know what's possibly going on with the car and that that way you know you set this in you know in your tune but anyways again um sorry this is such a long video uh and it's and it's uh you know kind of dragged out but um uh somebody buying my decapped injectors would feel a little bit more comfortable about you know buying them from me cuz uh it, it kind of sucks when you buy something and then you don't have any any type of uh support um, again, this is Dave with Dini 
performance. Uh, hopefully you guys like this content and you can like and subscribe and comment and all that good stuff.